Hello, funny junk in YouTube. So today, we are going to be heat treating the commission knife. Got it nice and roughed in and everything. Um, super, super awesome shout out to Infinity Stamps. They did a wonderful job on my touch mark. I am very into that. Surprisingly not that expensive with this too. I was I was pleased about that. Came out to be about $120 and I mean that's like a it's a pretty quality design I would say. So yeah. We'll get started on that. Okay. Solid hit. Let's grab this. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, I'm impressed. Yeah, let's make sure this is in shot. Fantastic job, Infinity Stamps. My goodness. Very impressed with that. Okay. Time to move on to three normalization cycles, then the stamping, and then the heat treatment. This is always fun. Always the funnest part, but always the most nerve-wracking part, too, so. We'll catch y'all after the uh, normalization cycles, when I stamp the knife. Okay, so the normalization cycles are complete. I've done any final straightening I might need to do. And now it is time to stamp it. Whew. Here we go. <laughs> Good. Okay. There we go. That looks quite nice. Okay, now onto the heat treatment, the make or break point. While things are getting ready, I have the forge heating up and I have my oil heating up. Now, I'm going to be using a uh, you know, meat reading, oil temperature, whatever, gaugey thing, to make sure that the oil is approximately 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, that's what I'll be quenching into after I get my steel up to non-magnetic. And you know, don't don't ever use color to gauge it exactly where you are. Make sure you use a magnet. It's the only reliable way, really. I mean, you can use color to see, like, oh, okay, I'm, like, way too hot for sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, other than that, really, the, the only proper way to tell is with a magnet. You have to make sure that your still is, uh, authentic, so. All right. And this is, uh, 1095, for those of you that haven't seen the other posts. 1095 tool still. Oh, all right, let's do it. One, two, three. Yeah, that 
looks like Martin's site to me, so that's good. I'm gonna clean it off and get back to y'all. Got it cooling in the vise. Yeah, you can see clear Martin site formation all up and through here, and I mean, if seeing it <laughs> isn't enough. It is very hard. Soft back here, hard in the handle. That's, that's good. Since it's gonna be a camp knife, it'll uh, help absorb more shock that way, so. Good deal. Oh, thank goodness. So I'm gonna let it cool a little bit, then I'm gonna go do what I'm gonna call a uh, Russian brush, where I run out to the shop and wire brush it real quick, get like some alcohol on it, clean it off, and then put it in the oven to temper. I'm gonna do two cycles at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit and um, take a break in between each of those to cool. So it'll be one hour, leave to cool to air temperature, then put in for another hour. And that should, that should uh, allow the carbon to remigrate throughout it. So good deal. Make a nice, nice sharp knife. <sighs> See y'all back in a bit after the uh, tempering and we'll figure out our final hardness with the Rockwell files. All right, so good news all around. Got the surface uh, starting to get cleaned up. I, I still need more down here, but the E turned out just fine. So thank goodness. That's like the primary thing I was worried about, but that, that turned out all right. So we're in good shape. Also, the uh, knife is between a 50 Rockwell hardness file and a 60, so that's perfect actually for this type of knife. This one doesn't touch it, that's the uh, 55, and then the 60 does dig in even down here, so. That's good. That means we're probably at about a 57 or a 58 Rockwell hardness, which for a uh, camp knife or a combat knife, whatever you want to call this, it's um, it's just right. So that's good. It'll be plenty sharp and plenty shock absorbent as well, especially with the uh, way that the uh, handle area is not quenched like the uh, blade is. So it'll make this nice and shock absorbent and tough and then the edge will be very very sharp and resilient so hooray again wonderful wonderful stamp i am incredibly happy with that little bit of scale formation right there that if this were deeper i probably could get rid of but um you know, being as, as shallow as this was, and, and that's my fault, just because I didn't hit it hard enough, but I, I'd be able to get all of that out and crispin it up a little bit more, but that is great in my opinion, so good deal. All right. Time to uh, see how it cuts. Bye. There we go. My hands will work. Super, super sharp. Let's see if we can find something else to cut. Something a little harder, maybe. See that's in shot? Yeah. Just makes quick work of that. And that's Pretty dry, pretty hard wood, so. That'll work. And one more test. As much as I hate to do it to the little guy, let's see how it handles something like a sapling. Let's see if we can do it in one strike. Probably can, because my Glacier Bay did this in two, so I think this knife might be better. Or, I think, I know this knife is better. <laughs> I'm just putting way more time on it. Yeah.
and you can tell super clean cut little bit of tear right there but I mean it's like it's like minuscule so all right I'm gonna say that that probably is good <laughs> It don't, don't worry about the tree too much. I cut it like three feet up off the ground so it will come back. It'll just take it a little bit of time. You know, if, if you're concerned about the trees. And just for the sake of being thorough, the edge is completely fine after cutting the tree. Got a little bit of fuzziness, but that's from Kleenex. And it's still super sharp so good deal means we've got a pretty all right edge <laughs> good knife <laughs> and nathan baldick baldick i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly thank you very much for this commission it was a lot of fun to make and i really appreciate the opportunity Everybody, go check out Just to Carry It. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly as well. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching.